There is a lot going on in terms of talk on the Internet about nuclear radiation from Fukushima. And, truth be known, from all the nuclear power plants in the United States, all 104 reactors do emit radioactivity. That's a fact. But the big story is Fukushima. Today, one of the top Russian experts said that Fukushima is much worse than Chernobyl. Uh, We told you that a couple of months ago, potentially, and it's certainly come to pass. The issue is one of radioactivity being continually leaked from these three melted down reactors. One, two, and three. Uh, We're not sure if TEPCO is telling us the truth about what's really going on with five and six, which were supposedly in cold shutdown. We don't know. There are other radioactivity issues from other nuclear power plants in Japan. One of them, cobalt. Uh, That was a a big story today that went virtually undetected. We posted it yesterday. Actually, we got it early. So what I wanted to do was spend an hour with a gentleman who understands radioactivity probably better than most anyone listening, barring you physicists out there and other scientists. He is with a company called uh, Geiger Counters. Dot com. Now, if you go to GeigerCounters.com and want to buy a, a, a meter, uh, a counter, uh, you, you're going to have a little bit of, of trouble. This has been an unprecedented issue in terms of sales and demand, uh, probably unlike anything. Did, did you expect something like this, Tim Flanagan, to happen at some point? You know, we uh, found out after 9-11 especially that uh, there was a a keen interest on the part of just individuals like you and me to monitor their, their, you know, personal uh, safety. Now, if you go to my site and look under the radiation featured story box, that's the uh, third one down there, you'll find uh, several links of importance. One is the radiation network map. And you want to tell us about that? You'll see it's it's fixed. It stays right there in the box at all times. It is one, two, three, third one down, live National Radiation Network map. Well, uh, Jeff, what that is is basically the culmination of our efforts to uh, develop a, a software and a network that basically links together the radiation monitoring levels of what really are personal radiation detectors from across the country and uh, potentially the world as well to create, in essence, what is a national radiation map that shows in real time what radiation levels are anywhere in the U.S., uh, you know, where we have a monitoring station. Uh, and and these, are, these are individuals, by the way, that, that have uh, a meter or a counter, and I guess you have software available for them to interface with the computer and hook it up so it, it's real time and it shows up on your map, correct? That's right. And, uh, yeah, most of our monitoring stations are individuals like you and me who have um, what we call personal uh, radiation detectors or Geiger counters. And instead of sticking them in a drawer uh, after we get done scanning individual objects or something, right. the idea is to put them to work to continuously monitor the environment and through the software, as you say, that runs the network, uh, basically contribute that radiation count data to the to the whole world, in essence. These are real-time readings. If you go back to that radiation box at rents.com and look at the fourth story, you'll see West L.A., Santa Monica, live readings. Well, this is one of the stations. This is a... a fellow down there and his wife. In fact, he was on the program here, and he maintains uh, a live visual with a camera of his instrument. It's an Inspector Plus, which is, in my opinion, the best you can get, and it'll show you what the reading is at Santa Monica uh, in real time around the clock. It's uh, it's very interesting, and I guess what we should do is, is talk about the, the readings that are most common, and those probably are counts per minute, uh, CPM. Uh, the alert level, uh, they say, is, is 100 or more CPM. Now, the Inspector Plus reads alpha, beta, and gamma. So it reads, it reads all three of the, uh, the key uh, isotopes that you want, the isotopic reactions in the environment that you want. And uh, 
Tell us more about this. And, and he's showing 44 in Santa Monica right now. Now, that's sea level. Uh, yeah, that, that would be considered a normal reading of background radiation, probably, mm -hmm. uh, because he's using the inspector. As you point out, it's pretty much the best uh, model in an all-around Geiger counter. It's a special model because it uses a pancake-style Geiger molar tube, which is more efficient than a standard tube Geiger counter. So it has a higher count rate. So to have a meter uh, like the inspector that is very sensitive to even those weaker forms of radiation, alpha and beta, uh, is a good thing uh, uh, for scanning uh, a food for contamination, for instance. I'm at 2,700 feet. Uh, is there going to be any kind of a, a, a benchmark difference in that difference in elevation, almost 3,000 feet difference? Yeah, um, and, and I myself am at a mile high, and whenever I monitor with the inspector model here in Arizona, my count rate is um, really into the 50 uh, per minute. Right. These things come in waves, and it just they just they vary. So I think it's important, first of all, to for everyone to understand that even even before Fukushima, before the Industrial Revolution, uh, there was background radiation on the Earth, uh, essentially bombarding the human species and all other life forms on the planet. And that's been there ever present since the beginning of, of life on this Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the extent that the human species has survived and even thrived amidst that, a reasonable person might conclude that normal background radiation is, is not harmful. Harmful. Not everybody would, would conclude that, but most reasonable people would. Well, we've adapted to it over God knows how long, and uh, it, it's been around, as you say, for over 4 billion years. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a kind of general belief out there among many people that uh, everything is radioactive, and really what the fact is behind that is that it's not that everything is radioactive, the sofa in your living room or, or your car. It's that background radiation comes mainly from outer space called cosmic radiation, cosmic rays. They're quite powerful. They penetrate the atmosphere of the Earth. They penetrate the structures of most uh, buildings. And that really comprises most of the background radiation on Earth. And uh, speaking of altitude, uh, Another test a person can do to, to essentially prove that the higher the altitude, uh, the higher your count rate, you could take your Geiger counter into a plane, and I've done this myself, a passenger plane at 42,000 feet. Uh -huh. And with that inspector that you have there that you've been uh, citing the readings from, instead of getting a reading of, say, 40 counts a minute, on an airplane at 42,000 feet, it would be more like 800 counts per minute. 800? 800, wow. yeah. It's, it's hard to believe. Uh, but that's because there's less atmospheric shielding of cosmic rays at that altitude. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if the prog progression is a linear, Jeff, from sea level up to 42,000 feet, but the, the trend is still there. So when people look at these different uh, numbers on, on the map, uh, you'll see the Colorado stations, for instance, that are a mile high or even higher. Yeah, their numbers are higher, and that's a good reason for that. Now, let's talk about this whole thing of RADs and REMs and, and measurement terminology, because it's, it's something that it, it has changed. We're now into the, the age of sieverts. Uh, sieverts, millisieverts, and microsieverts. And if you would just explain that for us, uh, it would be great. A normal background radiation reading uh, using the Siebert standard, which is the one you hear quoted quite often in Japan, and it is considered uh, the international standard of measurement. In, in the U.S. here, we've historically used the, the Renkin, or Renkin, however you pronounce that. Right. But in uh, Japan, uh, it's the Siebert, and a normal background uh, radiation level at sea level in Japan would be 0. 0.12 microsieverts per hour. Now, a, a microsievert is one one millionth of a sievert. One millionth of one, a sievert? One millionth. One, one thousandth of a millisievert. 
That's right. There's so much stuff over there that's hot. I have no idea what they're they're thinking about. What are they going to do with it? I mean, it's it's not an easy thing to do. A thousand millisieverts an hour in the debris outside of reactor three, and this is from a very reputable source. So that's that's real high. A thousand millisieverts an hour. You're allowed in the U.S. According to the feds, three millisieverts a year in accumulation. That's considered a a safe dose. So this is pumping out a thousand an hour. Again, these people going in there with paper suits basically are not they're not protected at all. They're protected from anything that may fall on their skin, but uh good luck. Yeah, um the uh exposure to the gamma radiation will go right through that paper suit. Uh, but um, this brings up a point, Jeff. There are other, uh, you know, risk factors, uh, what the rain can bring down. And uh, I've done my own scanning, actually, of uh, captured rainwater uh, here in Arizona. And um, two weeks ago, I did find some radioactivity in my rainwater. Really? Yeah. Um, I used an instrument similar to yours, not not quite uh, the sensitivity, similar uh-huh. to the inspector, but it has a feature known as a total timer that automates a, a time count over whatever averaging period you select. And I chose a 20-minute scan of captured rainwater, and then I conducted a scientific control and did the same 20-minute scan of my tap water, and then also compared it to the 20-minute environmental background radiation at my location for for that 20 minute period preceding the test and what it came out as was that the rainwater was emitting 26 counts per minute total including background whereas the tap water was emitting only 20 counts per minute Mm -hmm. and my background radiation level was emitting just 20 counts per minute also so that right there Mm -hmm. uh, because of the method I used was a, a, a good scientific based method it indicated the the rainwater had six counts per minute worth of radiation in it. Hmm. Now, I check with the yeah. people that I know who are knowledgeable about these things, and there can be a natural radiation component to rainwater. Uh, and the level that I showed was probably too slight to jump to any conclusions uh, as to whether or not that might have been Fukushima source. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the same subject matter, I've gotten reports from some of our customers in Japan, uh, for instance, one in Sendai, which is the largest city closest to Fukushima, yes. to the north, and he's reporting uh, five times background levels just in the soil, and that the contamination has come from the, in his words, the, the rain clouds brought down the radiation. Well, so, I, I did see a video, a YouTube video. Someone went, and I believe it was in Fukushima City, and they went around to downspouts on buildings from mm-hmm. rain gutters. Yeah. And whether or not there was water coming out of the downspouts, even if they were bone dry, they put that meter on the ground, say, uh, three feet away, and move it closer. And the closer it got, the, the louder the ticks. And it was just almost a buzz by the time they put it right under the actual mouth of the downspout. I mean, we're talking about substantial and serious residual radiation in the downspout here and on the ground below it. it so it, it, It's got to be a, a, basically a dead zone in the soil for many miles out. I don't know if it's... And actually, I have customers as far away as, as Tokyo, which is about 175 miles away from Fukushima... And while their environmental radiation levels are normal, uh, incredibly, uh, they are uh, detecting contamination in the soil that far away. So Uh, the radiation has made has made its its way that far through the uh, the rain pattern. Yeah, you bet, absolutely. They found uh, plutonium fifty kilometers away from Fukushima. Mm -hmm. Fifty. So. Um, that's forever. Another quick question. We only have a couple, three minutes left. Uh, floor tiles. I've been checking floor tiles. I have some floor tiles. Some other people do too. Uh, these particular floor tiles will read anywhere on a, a counts per minute basis from 80 to 120. This is just the, the geology and this is your background. 
Is that anything that people who have floor tiles should be concerned about? Well, it's kind of in the same area as the granite countertop that can be mildly radioactive. And well, yeah, they read, I have granite also, and they read around 80. Yeah, the way I, there's really three different risk factors there. First of all, on the granite countertops, if you're preparing food on that countertop, mm -hmm. like it's in a kitchen, right? Um, you know, what if you had a loaf of bread laying on the counter while you're preparing sandwiches? What if radiation emission from a mildly radioactive granite countertop radiates up through the bread? To me, it's not a chance I would want to take. So in other words, uh, that is, another, that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and then the uh, second risk factor is just the exposure to the what would be environmental radiation. Uh, and if you're in the kitchen, you know, half, half of your day, does that exposure get you above that maximum recommended annual dose? And then the, the third risk factor would be a radon gas related. Radon gas is a byproduct of uh, the breakdown of solid radioactive minerals. And uh, in a closed environment, uh, uh, a house can be closed and sealed uh, to some extent. If there's enough radon gas buildup, uh, that's, that's a risk factor. And if you have stone products in your house mm -hmm. that come from the earth in essence, they're they going can, to, yeah, that's what they do. Mildly radioactive yeah. from that as well. Yeah, interesting. Well, the, the granite and tile industries, strangely enough, don't talk about this. <laughs> you know, we had a scare about the three years ago because uh, some of the, the big media organizations, newspaper and television, had done some reports on this. And we had an awful lot of customers at that time, uh, anywhere from homeowners who had granite countertops like you, uh, to home inspectors who do this kind of work uh, ah, yeah. as a business from, uh, as well, a granite supplier. And, yeah, the granite suppliers, you're right, it was kind of a, of two minds. Some of them wanted to dismiss any risk factor. After all, it's their business. But others wanted to pretty much know for themselves if it was, in fact, a risk factor. So, And it is. Uh, well, it, it is. Uh, and we can all argue about how much of a risk factor, but um, the science is there, you know. Indeed, indeed. The geology, the science is there.